On today's Toy Spot, we're going to be having a look at the Masters of the Universe 2000 series. We're going to be looking at He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Um, the line did really, really well. This line as a whole did really, really well. And then for some reason, just like that, it it was gone. And I think maybe the biggest the biggest culprit for this line was the fact that it it dealt so to repaints and remolds of the exact same figures over and over and over again. But if you can get some of the core figures like the He-Man and some of the original Masters, um, it is a fantastic toy line. Packaging we've got packaging was consistent through the majority of the the earlier waves. They slight they changed they changed later on with um, with some of the later release figures. But the earlier line had the basic red uh, background with the Masters of the Universe logo at the top there, which also I might add served as a awesome sticker. I'm not making this up. Right at the top there, awesome sticker included. On the back of the package, the other figures that you can pick up are Battle Cat, we got Battle Sound He-Man, Stratos, Man at Arms, we got He-Man, we got Panthor, we got Battle Sound Skeletor, Beast Man, Merman, and a standard Skeletor down below. Um, features on He-Man here, we've got a Power Sword Battle Axe, a Battle Shield, and a removable chest armor. You can twist and release waste for sword slash and power punch. You can rotate power sword hilt for battle formation. There you go. The read up. A headstrong teenager with a nose for trouble stumbles upon an ancient stone casted deep in the Eternian in, in the Eternia forest. There he meets a beautiful sorceress who gives him a magical weapon, the power sword and tells him that only he can save Eternia from the evil Skeletor. By raising his uh, uh, the sword above his head, he transforms into He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Together with his heroic companions, Stratos and Man-at-Arms, He-Man takes on Skeletor and his evil horde uh, in the battle for all Eternia. Don't forget to collect them all. So there you go. Let's, uh, what we're going to do... So we're going to get this opened up and we will have ourselves a look at He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Stay tuned. And for those interested in seeing the incredibly awesome sticker that comes with the, the figures, it's right here. It is right here. How awesome is that? It is actually pretty awesome. You could probably put it on like a binder. If you went to school, you could be one of the masters. Put that aside. Let's have a look at some of the accessories that He-Man comes with. First, first, first things first, there we go. Let's have a look at his shield. He-Man's trusted shield, which I might add was also made in China. I think somebody should have told He-Man. Sorceress is pulling one over on him. Um, but a neat, neat classic update to the original shield that came with the He-Man figures. And... We also have an axe with some cat hair. I added that. That didn't come with the packaging. We've got the shield, which I might add also, if you can look inside there, has the He-Man crest in there as well. We've got some nice gold. Uh, looks to be like a, a slight green in there as well. But a very neat axe. Uh, not a small axe either. It's quite substantially large, which I like as well. And then finally, let's not forget the ever-trusted, ever-reliable power sword. Much different. I don't know if many purist He-Man fans actually enjoy the, the look of the sword. Um, it's definitely got a more organic, um, te technological look to it. I'm making this up as I'm going along. But it's very cool, though. I mean, it's got the same crest inside here, having the same kind of metallic uh, off-green there as well. Very neat. 
Put that down for a second. We're going to come back to some of these, but put that down for a second. Let's have a look at He-Man. And uh, he is a very neat figure. He is definitely very neat. He has a look around there. Now, unfortunately, being that this is an older line, um, He-Man doesn't have lots of articulation and still relies heavily on, on gimmicks. But uh, that aside, though, it is a strong, strong-looking figure. Um, I do like the face sculpt. Very, It's very nice. Kind of an updating uh, look to the original He-Man. A little more youthful, I would say, this He-Man is than the original He-Man. His loincloth, of course. Certainly he's ripped. He is definitely ripped. Got veins galore. All right. Now, let's if we go back to the some of the accessories, let's have a look at the action feature that He-Man has. He has a couple. First thing, we'll put the shield in his hand. There we go. And his shield, and let's give him his sword. There we go. Um, one of the gimmicks, as it were, is that you can take his waist probably helps if you raise this arm up just a little bit there there we go you can raise the pull back on the waist and let it go look at that I guess if you kinda there we go you got a little extra swing there um, it's not the greatest of gimmicks but at least it doesn't hinder the figure you know you have a little bit of waist movement anyways but very cool. The other gimmick, as the sword was flying out there, if you look very closely at the sword, it's actually, there's a hinge mark right here. And I, for a second, I actually didn't even see it. And I, I thought the packaging was lying. It wasn't actually lying. I just wasn't paying attention. But there's actually a hinge right here. If you take the sword and rotate it, um, you can simulate the transformation of the sword as he transforms from Prince Adam to He-Man. It doesn't go all the way because then it gets stuck on this end here, uh, but you can rotate it uh, almost all the way. You can also, rot of course, rotate it all the way back. Very cool. And let's say, let's put He-Man's axe in the back of him there. Oops. <laughs> let's put it in such a way that it's not going to fall out. There we go. And there we got He-Man poised for attack. Um, in the way of his articulation, after all that, I really should have just left this stuff off anyways, but we take the shield off. In the way of his articulation, as I mentioned, he's not going to have a lot, but it's really not too, too bad. He's got the art articulation in the head. Just a swivel. There's no ball joint or anything like that. Um, his ar arms can move out. Not a lot, really, but enough. You can get some range. Of course, his arms can rotate. There is no articulation in the elbows, but you can rotate at the wrists. You can rotate at the waist, but all of that relies on the gimmick. Um, the legs can bend back, can bend back and forth, and slightly out, as you can see. Sorry, I have to show you his crotch. There is a hinge on his legs as well. Um, but no articulation in the ankles. Of course, nothing in the in the uh, the knees either. Uh, the figure could have benefited from just some articulation in the elbows and some knees. But overall, though, it is a pretty cool looking figure. Um, the price of these guys have increased, depending on where you look. Sometimes you can luck out on eBay and find them for for a decent enough price. Um, but uh, for those who are collecting He-Man toys. And you yourself, my friends, are collecting the Masters of the Universe classics. Uh, I would say don't don't pass over this rare little gem. Not so much rare, but uh, these little gems from the 2000 series of He-Man uh, toys. They are very very cool and uh, pretty neat to put on a display shelf. So much, in fact, let's actually put the sword back in his hand. Let's go out on a high here. Today's toy spot. There we go. Now he's now he's sporting it. He's representing today's toy spot. We were having a look at the Mattel 
He-Man and the Masters of the Universe from the 2000 series of, of uh, cartoon. Today we're looking at He-Man. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more toy spots to come. And I will see you guys next time.